the key to a pathophysiological understanding of nystagmus is to understand the concept of plane and axis and the coordinate planes in which they exist. Now what exactly do I mean by a plane? When this eye makes this movement, it is supposed to be moving like this in this plane. So this is, you can consider this as a horizontal plane. So this is moving in the horizontal plane like this. The axis of rotation is this, you can see this, okay. So it is rotating around this axis and the axis of rotation is always perpendicular to the plane of the nystagmus. So in this case, if you consider this as horizontal plane, you see that the axis is perpendicular to the horizontal plane and the eye is oscillating around this vertical axis in a horizontal plane. When it comes to vertical nystagmus, if the eye is moving in a vertical plane like this, means it is moving like this in the vertical plane. So the plane is vertically oriented and the axis is going to be horizontally oriented right perpendicular to this vertical plane and the nystagmus, the eye oscillates in this plane. So eye is supposed to be oscillating in a vertical plane and the axis is in the horizontal plane, is in the and the axis is horiz horizontally oriented. Okay. Now when it comes to uh, torsional nystagmus, so what happens when it comes to a pure torsional nystagmus? So when you see a torsional nystagmus, the eye moves in this fashion. So here what exactly is happening is, it is rotating in this fashion. So the plane is like this, okay, the plane is like this. For horizontal, the plane was like this. For vertical, the plane was like this. Okay, this is almost a sagittal or a parasagittal depending on where you place it. And this is a coronal. So we have the plane which is coronal and the axis, you see this axis is perpendicular to that coronal plane and the eye oscillates around that axis in the coronal plane. That is the torsional nystagmus. Having defined the plane and the axis, now we need to define the coordinate plane. Like when we say that this nystagmus is in the horizontal plane, what do we mean by horizontal? Is it relation? Is it in relation to the earth horizontal that there is, this is horizontal and this is vertical? Do we talk in terms of the earth horizontal or do we talk in terms of the head where, okay, in the, for the head, this, this is the horizontal plane, okay, in the sense like the, we know that the semicircular canals have a 30 degree orientation upwards. So this is the horizontal canal plane. So are we talking about a axis that is oriented along the lateral semicircular canals or the horizontal semicircular canals or are we talking about something that is oriented along the earth horizontal or are we talking about something that is oriented along the eyeball horizontal. Okay. Pathophysiologically, each of these things make different meaning and when we actually decipher or a nystagmus based on which axis, the, the axis in terms of which coordinate plane that axis exists, then the understanding of nystagmus and the deduction of the pathology causing that particular kind of nystagmus becomes very, very clear. For example, what happens in congenital nystagmus is, okay, all of us know that congenital nystagmus is associated with generally A horizontal nystagmus is a very, very a common way in which a congenital nystagmus presents. So basically, the eye is oscillating in this plane. So in, in, in this plane. So what happens is the plane, we consider it as 
horizontal and the eye is oscillating in this horizontal plane. The one characteristic feature of the congenital nystagmus is that this horizontal is not fixed to the earth horizon, it is not fixed to the head horizon or the semicircular canal for that, no, it is fixed to the, the horizontal with respect to the eyeball. So, if the when the person looks up, the plane of the nystagmus also turns with the eye. So, along with the eye, the plane also turns. So, what happens is, the axis also rotates with the plane. So, what happens is, when you see the person looking straight ahead, you see the nystagmus something like this. When you look, when the person looks up, the axis also has tilted. You can see that the axis also has tilted and the nystagmus rotates. So, when you actually look from the pupil side, when you look onto the pupil, you look wherever, whichever position you see from directly straight ahead or when it is looking up, you look straight into the pupil, you always see that the pupil is moving horizontally. There is no torsional component imposed. What happens when we talk about a nystagmus, not the congenital nystagmus in which the plane moves with the in congenital nystagmus, the plane moves with the eyeball. What if this plane, instead of being fixed to the eyeball, is fixed to the head? Okay, that is what we see in, in people affect, afflicted with the horizontal canal BPPV. We notice in a person with horizontal canal benign paroxysmal positional vertigo that though there is a predominant horizontal nystagmus, we notice a small amount of torsional nystagmus. What is the explanation? Where does that come from? It comes from the fact that this plane, in case of a lateral canal BPPV, instead of being fixed to the eyeball, this plane is actually fixed to the head and it is fixed to the head along the plane of the lateral canals. Okay, so what exactly happens if this plane, instead of being fixed to the eye and rotates with the eye when it comes up and down, the plane remains fixed at an orientation of around 30 degrees from the earth horizontal or um, in the neutral position of the head and it keeps moving with the head but let us not go into that details right now. We will look at a person who is looking straight ahead. Okay, So if the plane was fixed like this, so what would happen? The, uh, that, that I will show you in a small demonstration. So what I have here is out of a, a container I have just made a, a something that looks like an orbit. So this you can consider as the orbit. So if this is my orbit and this is the eyeball situated within the orbit. So what happens in a person with a horizontal canon benign paroxysmal positional vertigo? We know by Ewald's law that a horizon, pure horizontal canal stimulation moves the eye in the plane of the horizontal canals or the lateral canal. So if the plane is this one, so if this plane is like this, the if the plane is oriented in this direction, the axis will be oriented just perpendicular to that. So what exactly I made here is I place the axis perpendicular to the plane, perpendicular to the plane. I have exaggerated that angle by a little bit more than 30 degrees just for the sake of demonstration. So what happens is, now, this eyeball, okay, is this uh, orbit is facing forwards, but because the horizontal canals are oriented almost in this plane, now what happens here is, I have selected the axis which is vertical to the plane of the horizontal canal. So, because the axis is vertical in relation to the horizontal canal, now what you see is, the eyeball irrespective of where it sees, the orientation or the rotation is around this axis okay, and not the vertical with relation to the eyeball itself because this is fixed to the head, this axis is fixed to the head. So what happens when the person is actually looking straight ahead is that, I will just make this moment, okay, is that, can you see a small torsional component? You can see a predominant a nystagmus in the horizontal plane. However, that is horizontal plane because the axis is 
almost vertical but it is not completely vertical it is oriented perpendicular to the plane of the horizontal canals okay so it has a tilt so when you look at this you can see that the eyeball shows a torsional component because you or all of us are used to looking at the eye from the straight ahead of the pupil perspective and not exactly from the perspective of this axis so when you look at the from the pupil perspective this nystagmus that is oriented along the plane of the lateral canals actually shows a small torsional component and that is the explanation and that is the reason why we see a torsional component in most of our people with horizontal canal b9 paroxysmal positional vertigo so when is the time when we when this torsional component becomes reduced it becomes reduced when the eyeball itself looks when the eye itself looks upwards where the pupil starts becoming oriented more horizontally or more perpendicularly in relation to this particular plane when somebody looks a little up then it looks it will become a, a little more horizontal and as the person looks down and down it becomes more and more uh, torsional and even when the person looks almost straight ahead even then you can see that there is going to be a torsional component okay now what i have done is i have just made the eye look a little bit upwards compared to the uh, just now completed previous uh, demo so what uh, now you can see that when the pupil in the previous video the pupil was a little bit more down now i made it go a little bit upwards and even then you can see that there is a there is a torsional component if you this spokes that i have drawn are to show the scleral blood vessels exaggerated representation of scleral blood vessels to make the torsional component more obvious and only when the eye moves even more upwards okay even more upwards is the time when this torsional component will become less what happens in case of posterior canal benign paroxysmal positional vertigo so just imagine it is the any of the vertical canals okay so we are talking about the right posterior canal so when you talk about the right posterior canal the plane of the canal is the larp plane that is the left okay i am stretching my head for uh, hand forward and to my left so left anterior and right posterior so this is the plane so this, this is the plane so this is front and towards my left and this is back and towards my right so this is the larp plane so the expected axis of rotation of the eye is along this plane so it is going to be along this plane so what you expect here is i will just show you the same thing okay now what happens is so we are we are speaking about an axis which is a, a plane which is oriented in this plane okay in uh, larp left anterior and right posterior so the axis will be almost if this is the plane of movement the axis will be just perpendicular to that plane so the axis will be something like this okay so axis will be something like this i'll show you so the axis is something like this so this is the front and this is the back so what exactly happens when the axis is like this is again we know that here the axis is important and not where the eyeball is looking to determine the uh, the oscillation of the eye so when you actually look at the pupil of a person who is looking almost straight ahead but if it is oscillating along this axis what happens is you see a vertical and a torsional nystagmus vertical and a torsional nystagmus if the person were to look instead of straight ahead or towards the right instead of that if the person were to look to the left what exactly happens is the pupil becomes almost oriented in a vertical plane with respect to this axis and that is the place time when we actually see a pure that is the time we will see a pure vertical nystagmus and when the person looks fully towards this side towards the right then it will be more torsional and if the person is looking almost straight ahead you will see a, a vertical torsional nystagmus like how you see here i will now 
change the orientation of this eyeball or the gaze of this eye to look more to the left and the expectation is when the eye looks more with this plane remaining fixed to the head okay with this plane remaining fixed to the head and not being fixed to the eyeball when this looks to the left the eye should move or should appear to be moving more in a vertical axis does that happen let us see so what i have now done is okay made the eyeball look more towards the left okay which means it is more now oriented in the larp plane so if it is oriented in the larp plane it is almost completely vertical to this particular axis so if it is vertical to the axis now if you look at the eyeball oscillation it looks almost vertical you don't notice the whatever scleral blood vessels torsionally moving that doesn't happen okay unlike how it happened on the previous occasion when the eyeball was looking more straight ahead where there was a vertical component and there was a torsional component to summarize the key to a pathophysiological understanding of nystagmus is to understand the planes and the axis in addition to understanding the planes and axis in which coordinate plane do, does that particular plane or the axis happen in came in, in cases of congenital nystagmus the coordinate plane is the plane of the eyeball so what happens in congenital nystagmus is that as the eyeball moves up and down the plane also moves up and down as the eyeball moves up and down the plane also moves so horizontal nystagmus looks horizontal irrespective of the gaze position whether the person is looking up or looking down because the coordinate plane is fixed to the eyeball and it moves with the eyeball when it comes to the vestibular especially semicircular canal generated nystagmus this particular plane is not fixed to the eye it is fixed to the head for example in the lateral canal this is fixed to the head just along the plane of the uh, horizontal canal which are which are oriented around 30 degrees from the horizontal lifted upwards friends lifted upwards so along this orientation this plane remains fixed now when this remain plane remains fixed as the eyeball orients in different planes it appears to take a, a different kind of nystagmus okay in in some directions it looks like there is a more torsional component especially when it has a when there is a horizontal canal bppb and when you look at more up and up it looks having only a pure horizontal component okay so that has nothing to do with the plane actually changing it is actually something to do with the coordinate plane now being fixed to the head so when we actually start describing nystagmus in terms of its coordinate planes and with respect to that coordinate plane uh, which plane that particular nystagmus is oscillating in then it becomes very very straightforward to reach a diagnosis congenital nystagmus coordinate plane is fixed to the eyeball and the semicircular canal generated nystagmus is fixed to the head because semicircular canals are fixed in the head as the eye moves up and down it appears to the nystagmus appears to have bigger or lesser torsional components and appears to it, it is just an apparent change in the plane because we are trying to reference it with a with the eye if you ref, shift the reference instead of from the eye to the head then the appearance of torsional in some directions and vertical in some other directions just becomes plain and that is the key to a pathophysiological understanding of nystagmus nice